right, go ahead and hold it. Hold it out, take so it. And go off the couch. Turn off to the side. Okay? The and put collar. your hand. So actually, watch my body language. So go to the side so you're actually in the same angle. You're doing this. What we want you to do is do this way. And then put your hand out. Yep. And then she doesn't want to go over, that's okay. So this is collar. this is a good you can say bell and see if she wants to. Bell. So bell look at Bell come. Bell look at Bell's body language, guys. Okay? So she hasn't been around a lot of people. And I, I knew this could happen today and I was fine with it because it's a good learning experience. Can you see how her tail's low? Yeah. Can you see how her ears are back? So if there's a fearful dog, Iris, what do you do if you see a fearful dog that you don't know? That's right. Yep. You always want to give the dog space and let the dog come to you. Let them decide that they want to be pet. What happens if you pet a fearful dog when they don't want to be pet and you keep moving into their space? Do you know? Uh, I assume that you should probably just leave it alone until it's going yeah. to like, run away. You want to leave it be, otherwise if it gets pushed, it might bite, right? So in Belle's case, that would have to be a large amount of pressure. But let's say there was 10 kids in this, and we all let them rush up to her all at once, right? Then any dog, I want to make it clear, any dog, even the friendliest dog, if they're pushed, they, they can escalate to a bite. No. We were going to teach you how to do down, right? So you could also... Reward the dog for a down. You want to show, um, you want to do the demo and then we'll let David try the down. So you're going to do this way to the ground and then out. And the dog follows it with his nose. And then you would give the dog a treat. Okay? Oh, hi, Belle. Hello. Maybe she's going to want to do it now. Let's see. Backing up a little bit. That's okay. All right, go back to your owners. Okay, so you go ahead and do it with Iris. So you're just going to go. <laughs> and you want to think of going all the way up to the muzzle. Yep, and then moving it down. Yep, yep. Let's see if that will. Thank you, David. Very nice. You can go back to your seat. Um, Belle doesn't know down that well. And some dogs are resistant, especially if they're feeling scared. But you see how their head's going forward? Mm -hmm. Then eventually, um, go ahead and move your foot, Anne. Um, they may go into the, into the down. And every dog is different, right? If they don't know what it takes a while to train. So that may not be something that you want to spend time on. What's more important for dog safety is that we're getting the dog being rewarded for that, that sit or the, the four on the ground. Hi, Belle. And if you wanted to train down the small dog, do you want to try, Iris? Sure. OK, so you're going to lure it. Let's see if Belle wants to go under. You're going to lure it underneath the legs. See this? OK. Can you do that? Get the treat? We won't use the hook. And then you can go back the other way. And then eventually, you can have your leg be lower. But you see how she's almost all the way or halfway down now? And if a dog is feeling uncomfortable, it will take them longer. There we go. <laughs> Down so, dog, little left dog. Yeah. So guys, when you're training the dog something new, do you think they're gonna learn it right away? No. How many of you guys think that if you're gonna get if you want a dog to down you're training the dog, they're just gonna down within five minutes? Some of them might, but if Belle's already showing that, you know, this is uncomfortable for her, which I knew. Um because I've worked with Belle before. But she could learn this. In probably like a week, right? And then she'd get she would get farther and farther into into a down. <laughs> can you show can you show them again the target command on Iris and tell them what target is? What is target? 
get the dog to come to you? What else can he do? Can he move the dog around with target? So let's say Belle's jumping on you. I could do target. And then I can give, since the quicker scaring her, we won't use that. Um, I could get the dog away from the child by using target. Belle, target. So you use the word and then you put your hand down. So they need to know what it means first, right? So you got to train it. So Iris, how would you train target? Do you know? Um, you got to have your food in your hand, right? So you train it with a lure first. So you have food, the food in between any of your fingers. And then you them how to have the dog come to them. So it's like a reaching, and then she back away. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Um, so you have the you have the food in the hand, and then you'd wait for them to touch it. And you'd just be a few feet away, and then when they do, you would say yes and treat. But you can see now she's scared. Right? So when you guys went to reach the powder, she backed away. Right? So then you did the right thing, right? Would you want to keep going after the dog if the dog doesn't want to be fed? No. A really good idea. And I can't tell you how many times, like, Iris and I personally have ran into dogs where the owner actually has given permission for petting, and the dog was actually more scared than Belle was. And they were encouraging her to keep coming over to the dog. But because her and I have talked about this, she knows to give the dog space even if the owner gives gives the go, which is a really good idea. So in this case with Belle, you know, we want to wait until she comes ready. And if it's a dog that you're going to be around for a while or the owner, um, you know, you guys are talking, you could always do calming signals and just drop some treats down and see if the dog is going to start coming over. Everett, do you want to come over and try that? Everett and Leland, right? Do one of you want to come up and try it? You don't have to. No? That's okay. You don't have to. So then you just see if the dog wants to come over. But the, what you want to try to avoid doing is holding the food out and making the dog come all the way to you. You're actually better off at giving the dog the, the treat where the dog is at if they're more scared. Now, Belle knows me, and this comes in and isn't, like, super fearful. She's just minorly fearful. So if I hold a treat out, she's going to come right away and get it, and then I can see the body language change. But let's say you held out the food, and the dog grabbed it, and then they ran off again. That's a clear sign that you the dog felt pressured to get the food but didn't really want to be by you and then <coughs> moved away, and then if it's pressured more, it... it could start, you know, getting more scared, and then, and then a bite could happen. My daughter is at Camp Whitewood, and she did an overnight, so she's tired. <laughs> she's all like, "Oh, you're tired, aren't you? Yeah, you're ready to go to sleep. Do you just want to sit down in the audience? No. I want to go on my iPad. You want to go on your iPad? I didn't bring your iPad because I thought we were going to do this together. Belle's a little calmer now. Yeah, she is. Um. Does anybody want to come up and try to interact with her? No? You do? No, I also do. Okay, come on up. So why don't you try what I said? Well, you get some treats here. Grab some treats up here. We'll get, give you a few because it's going to take her a little bit of time to get used to. Now, here's a, another thing to pay attention to. When I was showing you this demonstration, was I head on towards Belle and leaning over going, hey, come over here? Now, I actually was doing what's called, triggering this, we call calming signals. I'm doing things to show the dog that I'm not a threat, that they're scared. So I'm sideways. I'm not giving the dog a lot of direct eye contact. And then I'm letting the dog come to me. So generally, if you're down lower, too, um, that for um, some dogs, that can, that can be a good idea if they're a small dog. But... You're probably better off standing just because you're already a kid and you don't want to get your face close to a dog, right? Now, with Belle, I'd be comfortable with that, but I'm teaching you guys dog safety. This is an unknown dog that you don't know. Then, again, you'd want to do it in a calming way.
So go ahead and you can toss those treats to her one at a time. And then I would put the treats in this hand. Yes. And then that way your arm movement is a little less subtle. And then let's go ahead and toss one to her. Yep. What about the eyes? Should, should we, I mean, never look a dog in the eye, we were always told, because that's true. So if a dog is scared or aggressive, then you wouldn't want to give a lot of direct eye contact. But it's impossible to probably not look at them at all, and it's a good idea to do some looking at the dog because you want to be able to read the body language. So you'd be glancing more. So now at this time, can you see how her, whoops, I shouldn't have moved, now I scared her. When she was over there, her tail was a little higher up and was um, wagging at a neutral, a neutral height. Go ahead and toss some more. She'll probably come over again. Now, if it's a small dog and you feel like their, you know, body language is going to change to a happy dog like it is with Belle, then getting down low could help her feel more comfortable, and then I will go sideways again so you're not doing that direct line contact, okay? And then you could toss the treats this way. She might be starting to get full, too. Yeah, you want to be by your mama. I want to be by my safety net. Yep. So she wants to be by her safety net. So if the owner said, just come over and pet anyway, I wouldn't do that. The dog's making it clear that they don't want to have that contact. Right? You want to wait till the dog is, is ready to, to come to you. Okay? Good job. to take it away, then that dog is going to 
you know, growl or bite. Now, hopefully you guys don't ever run into a situation like that because hopefully most households, if they have a dog like that, they're taking precautions with kids. But if that does happen, who do you think you should tell? What's that? The owners of the dog. The owners of the dog. Okay, what if the owners of the dog don't aren't going to take action on it? Who would you tell? Tell your mom and dad, okay? Because there are people out there that unfortunately are in denial of the situation. It's usually not because they're bad people, but because they're just like, hey, I love my dog, and I just don't really see what's going on. My dog would never do something like that. So um, make sure you tell your parents, because then they can then take the proper precautions of having a conversation with that other parent if it's needed or putting up certain boundaries where you're not put into a situation like that again. Okay, so um, we have, Irish, you wanna pull, oh, oh, I forgot an important thing. Damn, I forgot an important thing. That one, but I was gonna do the toy in the hand. Do you remember that one? You wanna do the fence one first? Okay. Toy so, in the hand. Toy in the hand, okay. So when you're playing, Iris, come on out. So if I'm playing with a dog and I'm doing this, Iris, play with me rather than running away. Play with me, act like you like it. Who Who's going to become the play toy? Right, right. And then the, what is the dog going to do? Jump up some more. They're probably going to jump more. They might bite more. So again, that's when you'd be a tree, right? But then you, you go back to playing the same way again, and the same thing happens, right? Yeah. So when you play with the dog, you want to get a toy in your hand, kids. Always. Because otherwise, you become the play toy. Okay, so when you're playing with the dog, it's always a good idea that you have a toy, because now the dog has something to play with that's not you. And now you also have a way to be able to say, I have something to, you know, I have some power over the situation in a positive way. Of if a dog starts jumping, you want it, 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 you Start jumping on me. So then I can turn my back, right? And if the dog doesn't have the toy when they're jumping on me, I could also remove the toy. Go ahead and, so I can do a drop, right? And then the dog's jumping on me, to jump on me to get the toy. What would she do here? Drop. So you trade off. So you'd want to turn your back, and when, when do you think you would give the toy to the dog? When they're jumping on you? No, when? You're a, you're a tall dog. <laughs> like you jump like a jackal terrier. <laughs> Jack Russell Terrier would jump that high for sure. <laughs> Most dogs are going to get that high, you're silly. So now we got four on the ground. So then I could go back to playing again. Here, buddy. And that could be playing hug, or it could be just fetch, go get it, right? And then we'll bring it back, right? So you don't have to put it in your mouth if you don't want to. <laughs> Um, so then that way you have the power, okay, of, okay, now I have something to play with you instead of me being the play toy. What are some toys that your dog likes to play with, kids? Balls. What else? Rubber squeaky toys. Yeah. Ropes. Ropes? Great, great. Now what about your stuffed animal? Would you play with them with the pillow or the blanket or the stuffed animal in the house? No, why not? What's that? She rips it. And then she learned, what if she rips it? Did she have a good time if she ripped it? You think she didn't want to do it again? And then what do we teach a dog to do? To rip stuff that is not things that mom and dad want to be ripped. Right? So, you want to make sure that you're conscious about what you use when, when you play with the dogs. Okay? Cool. Okay, 
Iris, do you want to, what do you have in mind? Are you making a fence? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about different times where you would not pet a dog. Okay? So if you're walking down the street, and there's the fence up, and there's a dog behind the fence, and you don't know this dog, mom and dad aren't around because you're playing with the neighbors, you go over there and pet that dog? Why not? Could be that that's a good point, absolutely. Why else? Is this a dog you know? Do you know if they like kids? Do we know if the dog might defend his territory? No. He might. He might say, This is my house as soon as you come up. Right? Or he could be overly friendly and try to, you know, nip you in play as you try to pet the dog too, right? So we would want to make sure that we avoid that. You want to get the fence back up? It's so down and hurt me. It's so down and hurt you, are you okay? Okay. All right, what about, I didn't bring the leash. That's okay. So we can just pretend. You want to be the dog again? So let's pretend that this dog is, I'm going to move the fence now, Iris. Yeah! And you're going to be yeah. tethered, can you be tethered to this post? Okay. So pretend that there's a leash tying this dog. It's a tree, or it's somewhere next to a supermarket. Iris, would we pet a dog if they were in that situation? No. Why would we not pet a dog there?
to Anita with the baby over there? And then can you give this to the two kids? Great. Okay? So you want to look at 
a neutral height. And with every dog, that's a little bit different, but it's going to be not super down and not super high. And then usually the tail is going to be. You saw when Belle was wagging it. You, was it was it like a short wag or a wide wag? Wide wag. Yeah, big and wide, right? So it's usually a big and wide and fluid wag. Okay, that's when you can tell that the dog is relaxed. Because if you think if you're feeling less tense, then you got a lot of mobility, right? And that tail is just gonna go whoosh, 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 right? So a mad dog, very fast and short and up high, or up high and stiff. Right? What do you think the ears would do if the dog was happy? If they're thinking about food, they might go up high. Yeah. If they're not, and they're up high, it could be the dog is, yeah, and wanting to aggress. Because then they have that tail up, their ears are up, and they're ready to go forward. Tail's up, brr, right? And you can see that in your picture on there. Let's see if I hold up here, see if I can see. So they call it the alert dog. And so it starts with alerting, but then if the dog gets more in that alerting posture, then they're starting to want to move forward. Right? So that's like when, how many of you guys have felt angry in your life? You're mad. Yeah? Same point. Right? So then what would the ears do if you're mad? You're red, and how would they move? Up high, because you're making it so bigger, right? Tails up high, right? And the body, do you think the body would be down low? How would the body be, do you think? So you might even see the dog even looking like they're making it so bigger. Do you want to show them? You want to go under You want to go under me? Are you going to be like, a, a, a dog that's just doing whatever. So he would have that. Iris, come on. You want to help me? I'm coming to you. Okay, one more time. Okay, here you go. So you want to remember to look at that entire body almost. Now you can't take in all of that you know, in two seconds, right? But if you have some time, you see a dog, like I'll be walking with Iris down the sidewalk all the time, and I'll see a dog in the yard. It's like tails up really high, wagging really fast, ears are up, body's going forward, it's barking. And I'm like, hey, Iris, did you notice that dog? That dog is wanting to protect his territory. That's a dog we don't want to pet, right? And it's good to know that, because when you're walking on trails, don't you, do, do any of you guys do hiking? Yeah, yeah, great. So, if the owner's walking their dog, how many of you have ran into a dog on the trail that maybe doesn't like people? Yeah, yeah. And they may be doing the best they can on trying to keep the dog away, but a lot of them don't say much. They just keep their dog close. But if you know that that dog isn't friendly, would you crawl over it like that, Iris? <laughs> What's gonna happen if you do that? <laughs> it's gonna bark. It's gonna bark and could bite you, right? Yeah. So even at home, if you got a dog, you don't wanna crawl over them, right? Because that's going to, then you are perceived as a play toy. So we got, that, we got this dog that's aggressive. How about one of you come up? Who wants to come up and do, do a little demonstration with me? You want to do that one? No? Do you want to come up again, Dave? No? Okay. All right, well, then I'll do it. So, if I'm the owner here, okay, with the dog, and then I'm the kid, where would be a good position to walk? Irish, do you want to be the dog now? <laughs> Over the doggy. <laughs> I think she's getting tired. Um, but, but she's so, very quick. where would I walk? Would I walk right here? Ow, ow, if I was a kid, ow. no? Oh. What about over here? Would you walk here? You would walk back there? Show them, Iris. How would you, how would you walk past an aggressive dog on a trail? <laughs> yep, on the way opposite side of the 
trail. And notice how Iris went really slow. Right? That's what we would we want to do that? No. No. Definitely not. Right? So if you get scared because the dog's aggressive, you might want to do this. <laughs> and if that dog is uneasy around people, they're going to be more likely to lash out and, and bark. So you're just like Iris, so you want to go nice and slow and give that dog that space. Yeah. <laughs> I think what else we wanted to talk about. Why don't we do this? So we went over most of the stuff that I wanted to cover. What questions do you guys have? Come on. Yes. Um, how to tell which breeds are which breed? How to tell which breeds are which breed? Well, you'd want to get a book that talks about the breeds and then read about it and, and learn about them. You can learn about the herding dogs, the working dogs, all the different categories of, of the dogs and learn their different their different traits. And they have each category, you know, has a different personality. Like the herding dogs, obviously, they want to herd cattle, deer, sheep. I mean, they're bred to herd sheep, right? Yeah, do you have a book on you can go to the library. You, you can even do that today if your mom would, uh, would let you at the end. If you don't have to go somewhere, you can get a book on different dog breeds. Yeah. Yeah. What other questions do you have? What are something, what's something that you've had with your dog or someone else's dog that happened that you didn't know what to do about? Raise your hand. What do you do if a dog attacks you? What do you do if a dog atta is attacking you? So that's what we talked about at the beginning. Who remembers? What do you do? Uh, you turn backwards and you stand like a tree. Stand like a tree. Yep. That's exactly what you want to do. Okay? And hopefully somebody will come and call the dog off. If no one is coming, then you want to do that as long as you can. And then if you got if it's if you have to leave, you want to leave very slowly. Okay? Slowly. <laughs> If, by chance, you actually have treats on you, which more than likely you probably won't, but maybe you do, or you have some food on you, you could take the food and throw it and see if the dog will go towards the food while you go, while you go to leave. What if you run into a dog on the trail and you have food? It could. So what would you do? Turn Okay, what would you, but let's say you're hiking down the trail, do 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 and you're eating a ham sandwich, right, and a dog starts coming along, I'm eating my sandwich, dog's going to try to get it, maybe, right, so what, what would be a good idea to do with the food? Get rid of it as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, so you could... So when I was not hiking, when we see a dog come, we take the food and we put it in our backpacks and zip it up until the dog is passed. Right? I don't have the food anymore. I put it in the backpack. Right there. I'm hungry. I am hungry and tired. Yeah, I bet you are. Um, so then another thing that you want to think about too is what if you don't have time to put the food away right because that could happen then you want to think of would you go close to the dog or be farther away from the dog if the dog was on a leash yeah you'd be farther away and you'd probably want to you know hold the food away from the dog rather than you know down here where they can go and snatch it mm -hmm. yeah how do you get a dog to not beg? Yeah, Iris, do you want to um, help me with trading place? Why? Do you want to be a dog? Sure. Okay. So, if you... So, that's a really good one to talk to. I did this one with my dog when Iris was a baby because I didn't want my dog jumping up and grabbing food out of her hand when she was really little. And even when she got older. So, I had a place... So you, you want it to be um, eventually farther away, but initially when you're training it, it's a really good idea to have it close to you and 
farther away from the kid so that you can train really easily. Okay? So you want to come here and be the dog that I was? So, now that bell is in here, we can use some clicker. If we're training something new, we want to click with behavior that we like. Okay? You want bell. Bell. So, when Iris starts going onto the bed, then I would click that and <laughs> give her a treat. Okay? So then you're going to put the treat on the bed. Okay? And notice that the click happened as she was going off the bed or when she was on it. Do you watch? It's on it, right? Yes. Because many dogs yeah, might just start just walk this that click when she was on the bed there. Right? So it would have been a really good time to click when she had walked back on there. This is called behavior catching. So you're just waiting for the behavior to happen like randomly. Okay. No, you don't, no, don't eat them. Um, then you would put the treat down. Okay. So again, I rewarded the behavior for being on the bed. So the dog is going to go on the bed more often. Right. Then eventually, when they're willing to not pop off of it, then you can do it down. And then you can sit here and click and treat while your kids are eating at the table or you're eating dinner. You're done doing that. So you keep clicking and treating while the dog is on there while you're eating dinner. Mm -hmm. That's one option. Okay. Another option would be to give the dog something to do while they're on there. So it could be generally a food-oriented toy, so like a calm or a bully stick. We'll just pretend that this is a food-oriented toy. So you want to come back over by the bed, Iris? Um, and then when they go on it, you could give them something to do that would encourage them to stay on the bed. Now, if you give them, um, like a toy like that, they may just want to play with it. But if you get a food-oriented toy like Kong or a bully stick or a compressed rawhide or something that they don't want to play with, like Iris is doing there, um, then they're more likely to want to chew on it and stay on there, and then you don't have to do all the clicking and treating. So then they're getting rewarded for staying on there uh, while you guys are eating. And then your job is to release the dog before they're done with that item, right? And realize that they're not going to learn to stay on there for an you know an entire hour of dinner the first time you train it. You're gonna you're gonna have the expectation of they're staying on it for a few seconds, then working up to a minute, two, three, or if you gave them something to chew on, maybe the expectation that you start with is five or ten minutes because they're going to stay on it for a little longer while they're chewing on that. And then once um, they're done, before they're done with it, you'll release them off. But then you can teach them when you're done with the item at some point that I'm going to click and treat you for staying on there longer and get them to be on there for 20 minutes to, to an hour. You know, whatever, however long you, you want to need, what you need. Does that answer your question? That was a really good one. Because a lot of times what we do is um, we don't reward our dogs for doing that. And then they jump up and try to get the food, and then we're like, oh, get down, get down. And then we're actually rewarding the dog for doing that. They're getting more attention for that, so they want to do more of that. So we're changing the attention to be now, we're getting the attention when you're doing this instead. And it could literally, like people, it could literally be table scraps. Because like, some people want to feed their dog the stuff that they're eating at dinner. Every family is different. I have some families that do not want to do that. I have some families that do want to do that. So it doesn't matter. Just as long as you are rewarding the behavior that you like. Mm -hmm. All right? If you're giving them food for begging, then you're going to get more of that. If you're giving them food for lying down in their bed, you'll get, you'll get more of that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yes. What do you do for dog orientation? Like, what do you do when you want to introduce your dog to another dog? Oh, what do you do when you want to introduce your dog to another dog? Well, that is something that could have a, a lot of different answers to. Because, first of all, you would want to know, does your dog like other dogs? And does the dog you're introducing them to like other dogs? 
That would be the first question that you would want to have answered. If you do it like how you do it with cats, you should have them stay in one room. What is it? It's either a Give me a more specific or... scenario, because if we're just talking about random dogs, then I would have a whole bunch of questions oh, to ask. You have two dogs that do not like other dogs. Oh, okay. How you to introduce them to each other? So if they don't like other dogs, then you would hire a professional dog trainer. That's really important because you don't want to do that introduction on your own. You could get bit because you want to be an expert at, at reading dog behavior in a, in a situation like that. And then the way that I would do it is I would come to the house. I would, um, you know, evaluate everything that's going on and then we'd come up with a plan. Usually I would go on neutral territory. That's neither of the dog's territory. Um, and start with them being on leash and doing leash walking. But I've dealt with that scenario in a, a thousand different ways. It depends on the dog, their personality, the behavior that I'm seeing with, with how, I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do it. Sometimes I do training to get them used to each other on the leash first before I would even do um, them, them you know, introducing them, themselves and doing the training. Yes, Iris. You want to show them the dog in the fence again? Is there something new that you wanted to teach them? With the door. You want to do it with the door? Mm -hmm. That's a good fence, Iris. So who remembers? What do you do when you see a dog behind the fence? You do not pedal. Yep. That's right. Yeah, Absolutely. Right, does anybody have any questions? No? Did you like this class? Was it fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I originally signed up for this time when I had Iris signed up for the YMCA Burton camp, which then got canceled at the last minute, so she's at Camp Whitewood, so I was like, okay, just gotta go with it. And then she really wanted to stay overnight last night. So you know how it goes with kids, smash tired? Yeah. We had to pick up our daughter. She's at Whitewood too. So. Oh really? She's a oh, counselor. so you're doing the the five o'clock pickup? Yeah. She, See, well, I she's was a gonna... counselor, so she's. She got it. Oh, so she's one. Of the... What what do I know her? Um, Erebus. No. She probably is. Iris is in the day camp. She needs to do it the week. Right. Okay. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. She really wanted to come and help me teach today, so that's why she came with me. Okay, guys. So I want you to save this. Everyone has one, yes? We didn't get one. Did we not give you one? Okay. So it's a really good idea to look at these periodically. Go when you go on your hikes, bring it with you, or Look at it at home after you go on a hike and start asking yourself questions like, what did you see about that dog that told you that that, that dog was friendly, that dog was aggressive, that dog was scared, um, so that you can become an expert at, at reading dog body language and help yourself not get fit. Um, and remember to really give space in those you know, unknown situations. You don't want to pet an unknown dog. Now, I do have a few announcements for you guys. So, in July, I teamed up with Cold Nose Companions. Cool. We are doing a four-day class for kids and dogs. So you can come to the, dog, the class with your dog, and you're going to have a lot of fun because we're going to be doing training. We'll be training basic commands. You'll be making enrichment toys for your dogs. You'll be training treats. You'll get to um, interact with your dog in play and learn how to do appropriate play. And we're even going to go more in detail on how to read dog body language. I went on basics in here, but it'll be more in detail there. Um, if you guys want to go to this class, uh, you have the sheet. Uh, you, when you call on the phone, you just tell me that you got the sheet. You get 20% off. Okay? And it is four days within the same week. Um, because we wanted to make it easy if people were taking vacation time, okay? Um, so you can pop on um, any 
think I put the link on this one.